Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Harshita Shari. I head the operations for uh, Globe Dental. I, I am uh, head of clinical operations in South India. So today's topic is latest information on COVID-19 and, uh, and also its guidelines on safety protocols. So I mean, past one year uh, and currently also, we all know and we have sea of information about COVID and the infection and the treatment, vaccines and everything. So uh, I am here to give you the only the latest informations that have been uh, that have been prevalent now and uh, now we are following that. So let me give you a quick recap or an update first and let's continue with the latest information. First thing is we all have been infected and affected by COVID-19 in one or the other way. So firstly, uh, the thing that has been uh, that has been a game changer in in this war of COVID-19 is the invention of vaccines. Once the vaccines have come, many of them are getting vaccinated, and there is a hope that this pandemic will end soon. So that is the latest information that I can give you regarding vaccines. There are many vaccines that have come up. In India, currently, we have two vaccines, which is Covishield and Covaxin. Covishield is being, uh, I mean, um, the, uh, the Covishield is by um, Serum Institute of uh, India, and which is located in Pune. And the next one is uh, Covaxin, which is uh, from Bharat Biotech. So these are the two vaccines which are highly prevalent and we are being one or the other way, we are being uh, vaccinated either Covishield or Covaxin in India. This has been making a huge impact on that. Uh, secondly, coming to it is uh, regarding the tests that have been there. There are multiple tests that have come and the treatment modalities have also increased. Uh, multiple tests, we can talk about RCPTR test, which is still the gold standard. And uh, we have other tests, RAT test, and uh, we have uh, uh, CBNET, TrueNet, uh, CRISPR. All these are the newer tests that we have. But till now, the gold standard is RT-PCR. And because it is uh, done in a relatively shorter time and it is more effective. Uh, that is, that means that they have less false negative results. So uh, the next thing which I wanted to cover is regarding the many variants. We have new variants of this, G of this virus. Uh, earlier we have, uh, we have, um, kept it according to the region. So suppose it was found in UK, it was found in uh, India, it was found in Brazil, it was found in South, uh, South Africa like that. But now we have, uh, WHO has clearly demarcated and categorized them as alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. So alpha variant in uh, UK, beta variant in South Africa, gamma variant in Brazil and uh, delta variant which is in uh, which is in India. So among these variants, uh, alpha variant and beta variant are more infective and mortality rate is also a little high compared to other variants. So uh, this is all about the variants. Let me come to actually what is coronavirus? Um, we have been telling this in earlier times as well, that is in 2020 when we, when we had this coronavirus in India, that it is a lipid. It is a lipid covered um, virus in which it has a virus DNA or a genetic particle and a protein spikes around it. For any reason, um, if you have oil in your hand or anything, what would you first do? You would you would use a soap and water 
and clean it. So that soap and water is, I mean, that takes off the oil in your hand. So there comes the same idea that is, it is basically a lipid. So whenever you have, uh, whenever you touch some, um, you, whenever you go to hospital or whenever you touch an infected material, supposingly you thought as an infected material, well, you wash your hands, that's where it is. It is a high, what I mean to say about this, all about this is, it is highly variant. I mean, uh, highly volatile, sorry. It is a highly volatile. That is, it can't stay outside the human body for quite a long time. But there are various studies that it says that on the cardboard, it stays around 24 to 48 hours, uh, 24 to 36 hours, or on different, different surfaces, it stays. But recently, we have found out that it is mainly the infect the infectivity of coronavirus is mainly through aerosol and it travels it doesn't have wings or it doesn't have anything that it travels from one surface to another surface or anything no it doesn't so it is basically a virus so it needs certain media to travel that that might be a little water media water that is suspended in the air that is called aerosol or a wind that it blows so it can travel to an extent. That's it. Apart from that, it doesn't have wings to go onto the surface or anything. So that's why the main mode of transmission is through, through aerosol. The common transmission is very, very less, uh, very negligible, you can say. But still, the, the safety protocol that whatever we have to prevent it from ourselves for getting infected is masking ourselves that you have to protect your mouth and nose so that uh, you don't ingest or you don't have the coronavirus contacting your mucous membrane or the what you can say in colloquial languages anything that is wet inside your mouth or inside your nose if it contacts then you have chances of getting coronavirus infection so uh, that is about it and uh, there are other there are many sorts of sampling that we do but at the moment the most uh, the most widely used sampling technique is through nasopharynx that is you have a long stick which has a cotton at the end and then they introduce it into your mouth into your nose and then back inside the most nose which should go around 8 centimeters to about 10 centimeters inside a nose, which is an adult nose. So for a child, it is uh, it is roughly around 3 to 6 centimeters, that is for a child. But for an adult, it, this much deep it should go and you can get the sample from there. So uh, many of them might ask me that, uh, ask me that why we have so many negative tests why we have so many negative tests um, during this, uh, while we are having, uh, giving a test to our RCPTR or anything, why do we have not of negative tests? There are reasons like the, the stick or the sampling stick that we use uh, might be already uh, be contaminated or uh, might not be very sterile. Uh, the second thing is you might not get in deep into the nose that is proper nasopharynx to take up the uh, I mean take up the sample. The other thing is regarding the um, when you are uh, taking it, there might not be enough uh, material that you can take out from that. So very little many material. The stick might be contaminated, and uh, the the process in which you do it. Uh, might not be very correct. So these are the things that you have to take in. Uh, you you have to be uh, vigilant about when you are giving for uh, when you are giving a sample. So other thing is that uh, double masking, which has recently everybody says that now uh, double masking. Why double masking? So uh, we have seen that in many cases. Thus, uh, I just told you that uh, formide, uh, formide infect, that is the infection coming from the surface is very, very less compared to infection coming through aerosol 
or uh, being very near to the infected person or um, you have a, a person uh, coughs or sneezes and you are in the range of that person all these all these carry more infectivity than you touching a surface and then uh, and then rubbing your uh, nose or your mouth uh, or putting your hand in your mouth or anything then that causes but uh, apart from that uh, the more infectivity is due to uh, cough sneeze or aerosol transmission so double masking where we advise them so that there should be an air tile air tight seal when you you have to cover your nose and mouth so that is where uh, that is the idea behind that uh, the other thing which i wanted to tell you is about the symptoms what are the symptoms which we had earlier in covid uh, one wave and now um, now uh, the thing is that everybody has um, recent everybody experiences more of breathlessness that means that um, that means that the virus is infecting the lungs more uh, and then the, um, it causes pneumonia acute respiratory distress syndrome lot of cough and um, apart from the lung involvement we also have seen which we have not seen in first wave we also have seen uh, conjunctivitis redness of the eyes dry mouth and also something called as covid tongue so we uh, a covid tongue means you have certain discoloration white and red discoloration on the surface of the tongue um, and also uh, on the on the gums and on the cheek inside the mouth so all these symptoms we have not seen in covid 1 and uh, in the phase in the wave 2 we have been increasingly seeing this the second most important thing is that uh, it is affecting more of young adults who are less than 30 uh, years old so government of india that is ministry of health website has told that earlier in first wave it was only 31% of young individuals were infected now in second wave it is 32 so it is increased so next coming to the okay next uh, coming to that you might ask how many people have been infected in uh, uh, in india now so 30 lakh people have been infected but among which 28 lakh have recovered already and they are healthy and uh, and also uh, 8 lakh people are currently active so this is what uh the Go- uh, government of india health uh, website states so the other thing which i wanted to cover is regarding the safety guidelines coming to the safety guidelines uh, earlier um, if we have to open the clinic or open uh, uh, open a dental clinic or um, or a eye clinic or perhaps Uh, ENT clinic outside the hospital setting everyone was scared and they had completely shut down the clinics now we all know what how it is transmitted what are the variants how infectivity is how how much is the infectivity how uh, what which uh, people are mostly affected immunocompromised not immunocompromised young individuals what are the signs and symptoms what are the other things everything we have a clear cut idea of what it is so uh, so once we have a lot of information uh, like we say knowledge is light and knowledge can take care of dark- darkness so by saying that uh, because of this knowledge we started our safety protocols in cloak dental uh, cloak dental before also had lot of uh, safety protocols but now it has been enhanced i would say uh, we have something called as 10x safety protocol 10x safety protocol all means uh, um, you have you have used like uh, 
um, any floor floor disinfectant or anything they all say 10x safety protocol 10x safety protocol but nobody says that what is the 10 things so but here i can give you a clear uh, explanation of what is 10x safety protocol the first 10x safety protocol that we follow is disinfection of the surfaces and the areas and sterilization protocol the second thing is our trademark four step sterilization that is is a which before covid also or before we have been following it from ages and uh, this is not anything new to us uh, or new to the medical medical fraternity so we have been uh, following it and uh, it meticulously we have been doing it the second thing the third thing is aerosol uh, aerosol suction and decontamination unit which is very very important which we have uh, recently um, during uh, after understanding how the uh, how the covid virus transmitted we bought this machine it is the name is itself suggest that it is aerosol suction it sucks the air and kills the virus and bacteria that is there and then transmits the air outside um, which is a uh, which is good air air we can breathe so pure air we can breathe so that's what this machine does and each and every clinic of a clo dental have this machine and uh, we have been using it and the next next equipment that we are talking about is constant fumigation machine or an equipment constant fumigation equipment is that it continuously throws medicated air around the clinic so that uh, the air in the clinic is purified and it is um, and it is medicated so that uh, all the all the persons and uh, personnel working in the clinic dental assistants doctors and the patient are safe to work in that environment the third thing is uv light where the uv light um, uv light kills the bacteria and the virus so we have big uv light chambers where we keep the uh, materials which are non sterilizable in that and so that they are sterilized there so other thing is pre treatment screening that is when a person comes to the clinic before that we give a call and find out what are the symptoms what is that that he has he has any um, co fever cough cold uh, or any of the symptoms then we give him the particular appointment so that the social distancing is maintained all these things we do in the pre treatment screening after pre treatment screening it is is uh, we follow gold standard ppe we not only use ppe for our assistant for doctor but also for the patient we give all the necessary ppe for our patient so that uh, we can um, we can uh, comfortably finish our treatment and the patient can go home safely the other thing which we do is is which is the seventh thing which is a responsible well, um, bio medical waste disposal that means that we are disposing all the biomedical waste that we use in the clinic we dispose it so that it is not um, it is not given to a municipality or we just not throw on the road or something so that dogs can take it up it's not like that we we are very responsible people and we have uh, we have our biomedical agencies who come on a, a allotted time time to the clinic and pick up the biomedical waste of the clinic every day so that it is disposed of very safely the next thing is that we have all our uh, we don't do any paperwork or anything all our paperwork documentation is all all we do it in the software and uh, periodic clinical audits have been done by our quality team this is one of the trademark also i would say for flow we have quality assessors coming to the clinic every fortnightly and doing the quality check and uh, lastly but not the least we have daily fumigation at the end of the day so these are the 10x safety protocols which i have explained to you in detail well, uh, so let me see if you have any questions
okay okay uh, so we don't have any questions at the moment that means that whatever i'm saying everything is understood or uh, nothing is understood so it's okay uh, okay let me cover up some other topic uh, a little about more about vaccination okay when and who can take vaccination so a corona positive everybody should take vaccination unless they are um, i mean chronically ill immunocompromised uh, or they have been admitted to hospital for one of the other reason or any person who is going on to the surgery he, these people can also take vaccination but uh, but with a little bit of delay which is 15 days especially for the people who are um, going for um, minor operations or anything or admitted in a hospital after 15 days they can take a vaccine so for a corona positive patient uh, the patient uh, will need to recover from the corona and then after that 3 months after recovery they can take a uh, vaccination so if a uh, uh for example if you have taken a first dose after which you have tested positive so when you have to take a vaccine so after first dose if you have been tested positive again after the symptoms comes and everything after 2 months you can again take the vaccination the second thing is uh, regarding the lactating women and the pregnant women we still don't have a long long term studies or cohort studies for especially for pregnant women but uh, there has been found that it is safe to take vaccination uh, for a lactating woman earlier we didn't know about that now we know that we can take um, i mean vaccination can be taken for uh, this is from who website that uh, we can take vaccination for a lact uh lactating women can take vaccination so uh, for example if you have done a blood donation when you have to take a vaccination so for a blood donation people well, you have to um, especially why i'm talking about the blood donation people is that but they have to get a rt pcr negative and then they have to take the vaccination after 15 days of donating the blood okay uh as you all know that uh, covid shield and co vaccine there is after first and second dose there is a time gap uh, for covid shield the time gap they have increased sorry increased uh, uh they have increased now to 184 to 122 days uh, for uh, second dose of uh, co vaccine it still remains same uh, which is 28 days so Anything else that we have? Let me see if I have any questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Pranit. Uh, now that this pandemic has been declared as airborne, how equipped is Cloud Dental to deal with it, Doctor? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, we have uh, as. i mean this this was nothing new to us that it has been airborne because we already know it was airborne and we have double masking and we have um um as i've already told you that it is we have a machine called as or an equipment called as aerosol suction unit so each um clinic in our uh, cloud dental pan india has this equipment so that what does this machine do this machine has a big top and then when we are doing uh, some uh, procedure or anything in or even without any procedure if you keep it on what happens is it sucks off the aerosol whatever that is there that is been produced and then it has layers inside it so that the layers it passes through the ray it percolates the air percolates through the layers and it gets purified and then the purified air pumps out of it so that's how we um, that's how we deal with the aerosol in the clinic and uh, that's the equipment we have used and also we have constant fumigation machine and also 
uh, in that constant mach fumigation machine, uh, we use a hospital grade fumigator, fumigant, because in that it is it kills all the uh, virus or bacteria which are suspended in the air, so that the air is um, I mean uh, air is uh, pure to breathe. I hope I have it, uh, answered your question. Is it safe to visit a dental clinic during pandemic? Of course, it is very, very safe. Uh, why I would say that in the last uh, COVID wave, uh, it has it has um, nowhere documented that because of the dental clinic, there has been a transmission of COVID or any. But closed uh, uh, dental, all the clinics, all the clinics we have around 350 clinics across India. So not even one uh, person has been uh, tested positive because he was working in the clinic. All were uh, getting the infection because um, somebody else in their house have been tested positive already and they got contacted with them. But till now we didn't have and also the many researchers say that but, uh, and they have publications around the world which says that uh, not even a single case has come out which has been um, positive uh, due to uh, taking due to any dental treatment or anything so it is completely safe and i would request that if you could see all the 10x safety protocol which i have just uh, spoke about in my earlier uh, uh, in this talk earlier uh, all if any clinic which follows all these 10x safety protocol and you're confident of this, then sure, visit that clinic and get your treatment done. Uh, hi, Mr. Sujan. So that's a very informative session. Thank you. Uh, how soon can I visit for dental checkup after being COVID positive? So uh, we tell our doctors that uh, there are three three main points that we have to remember. One is that after 14 days, I'm saying 14, I'm being a little more cautious, but the studies and the research or the CDC guidelines says that after 10 day, 11th day, after 10 days of infectivity, after uh, uh, infection, the 11th day, the virus stops multiplying in your body. So uh, you are... Uh, basically a non-infected person, uh, I mean, you might have, but uh, you are safe person to get the treatment done. But here I would say I would put another four days. So 14th day, I have given uh, uh, a circular to all my dental clinics that after 14th day of, uh, of your first time, after 14 days, you can go and visit your dental clinic. The second thing is that you should be very uh, careful about uh, the patient having no cough, no high fever, uh, and no breathlessness. If these symptoms are not there after 14 days, definitely we can treat that person. And uh, the the last uh, thing is that uh, if you don't have any symptoms and uh, you uh, you have been there, um, I mean uh, you have contacted a person and who is COVID positive then you refrain uh, yourself from coming to the clinic. Otherwise, you are most welcome to come to the clinic. Hope I answered your question. Thank you. Um, it is uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Mohammed. Uh, what precautions are Clo taking while treating dental patients? Yes. Uh, yeah. Again and again, I'm telling the same thing that we have Stenex safety protocol. Uh, we use the gold standard PPE for everything we use. And also one thing which I forgot to tell you is that to decrease the viral load, we are giving betadine mouthwash, 0.2% of betadine mouthwash to gargle for 20 seconds. And then and your viral load in the mouth will be decreased. And then we can continue the treatment. Apart from what I have told that for the safe, that surface disinfection, um, sterilization, safety protocols, sterilization protocols, uh, UV radiation um, chambers that we have, 
and the screening of the patients, all these things and the equipments that we use, that is ASTU and uh, that is aerosol suction unit and also we have, uh, we have constant fumigation. So apart from all these things, that is what dentists usually do before starting the treatment after screening and everything. Um, okay, I hope I answered your question, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, then we have uh, Ms. Neha Mary Mathur. How many days post COVID vaccination it is safe to visit a dentist? Vaccination, I mean, I mean uh, immediately after vaccination or uh, uh, next day after vaccination, I don't think so. We have any protocol regarding, as far as I know, uh, regarding vaccination, I suppose, because sometimes you might be little, um, uh, little feverish uh, and uh, you have body aches and everything. Maybe you don't want to visit a dentist at that point of time. A day or two you can uh, you can take off but after that uh, you can visit your uh, dentist um, um, but uh, as far as I know there is no particular protocol that after vaccination and there is something that but it is safe to visit uh, a dentist after vaccination it depends on you if you are feeling okay hey, you can visit after a day or two uh, if you're not uh, um, I mean if you're not feeling well you can uh, I mean postpone it until you feel better with the vaccination then you feel yourself you can come and visit the dentist. Thank you. Uh, next we have uh, Dr. Priyanka. Hi ma'am. Hi ma'am. How after how many days of vaccine can we get our teeth extraction done? So we can take pain medication. Please advise. So uh, there depends on which vaccine you are using. You uh, you have to get a proper history before we do it. After vaccination, if you are wanting to get your teeth extraction done, and you have to um, give a detailed history to your uh, doctor regarding uh, regarding your um, vaccination, which vaccine you have taken, and everything. Because because if if we have taken a co if you have taken Covaxin, in then you have a certain allergic reactions to uh, um, to the NACIDs, particularly which is uh, which is Brufin uh, or uh, I, um, those NACIDs can cause a little bit of um, allergic reaction. But after that, uh, if you tell the doctor, he or she will avoid such medication. And give you other pain medication to it and extraction yes you can go ahead and do the extraction immediately after uh, um, I mean as I said I just uh, told that uh, before that that once he starts to feel better by within himself he can get but if you are talking about the immunity perspective uh, uh, when does the immunity sets in then there are different different types of Im, uh, immunity that sets in. It takes time after first dosage of uh, vaccine to set in the immunity. But uh, if you're waiting for the immunity to set in and then come and take, then it is another question. But uh, after vaccine, if you are following all the protocols of safety protocols that we are following, I don't think so. We should stop any treatment um, as such uh, to, uh, I mean, we can proceed with any treatment. Um, yeah, uh, Ms. Ranjini, uh, there has been a rumor that's going around that people should not take local anesthesia if they have undergone vaccination. Is that a rumor, ma'am, or is it actually have any effects? Um, as far as I know, it is a rumor and it is, uh, I mean, there is no uh, studies that they have proved that uh, uh, after vaccination, the anesthesia will cause as uh, anaphylaxis or allergic reaction or any sort of that but uh, there is no proof as such and uh, whatever it is it is a myth at the moment um, why i am saying at the moment because still uh, we have large um, we don't have a long scientific study to prove or disprove anything at this uh, at this moment of time so i would say that at this point of time we didn't have any fatalities regarding anesthesia, local anesthesia being administered and the patient died of any sort, but they have, they might have certain effects, but that, that, 
uh, we have to give a benefit of doubt that patient is might be having an allergic or allergic reaction already or uh, he's allergic to uh, anesthetic already or um, he, there might be n the number of reason so we have to rule out all those things yes it is a room okay um, next we have uh, uh mr dada kalandar uh, is covid 19 airborne if so how it is that how that is taken care in clo yeah um, as i already told you that airborne means that uh, um, that um, when a person sneezes or talks loudly or anything in that uh, the the spit that comes out of the mouth travels travels across uh, sometimes it across 3 meters also so that um, uh, the main thing which we have to use and the gold standard here is mask both patient and the uh, uh, dentist uh, the second thing is the equipments that we use in the uh, in the clinic and uh, um, a after every patient we do surface disinfection and sterilization so and we maintain the social distancing and the appointments are maintained in such a way that there is no crowding in the clinic uh, and also we have clinical and quality audits that is taken care so all these things and uh, equipments make the clo clinic safe for uh, the patients to come in and get the treatment in this pandemic so hi ma'am is implant is advisable for post covid recovered yes definitely uh, there is no contraindication that uh, we have we should not recommend an implant they are uh, they depends on what kind of medications that have been taken by them you have to get a detailed history i always send a message to all my clinics across south saying that uh, across clo saying that uh, uh, if the um, if the patient is been uh, treated the severity of the covid infection has to be taken uh, has to be uh, taken care of and the medications which we was in all these things if he is if we are taken care of and uh, we take a sensible uh, move uh, in that um, i don't think so there is any contraindication for post covid recovered patient not to have any for not only implant or any surgical procedure i'll take two more sessions and uh, we will uh, we already have i already ran 8 minutes so i'll take two more sessions and then we'll finish okay uh, how do treat dryness or burning sensation of mouth after covid infection uh, great question uh, dr parul uh, so generally we ask the patient uh, uh, we do a thorough check up and we take the history and everything that's that's how the routine protocols we follow and if the patient is having complaining of dry mouth uh, dry mouth is basically due to um, because a virus attacks some part of salivary gland and creates it's uh, a little um, that um, it the glands will not secrete the saliva as it should be secreting so that's why we have dryness of mouth in the uh, covid patient post covid uh, patients or covid patients also the, so we would uh, ask them to sip the water in between take care of their oral hygiene step up uh, their oral hygiene drink uh, uh, plenty of water and uh, stay uh, hydrated themselves and then we have uh, um we have to take care of their oral hygiene especially if they have come to you do a professional uh, professional round of uh, come to us we can do a professional 
round of cleaning that is uh, cleaning of teeth in between the teeth and underneath the gums so that there's no debris or anything that irritates the gland more and then uh, and then advise them uh, um, um, if they are having uh, advise them that what kind of a, a mouthwash they need to use and how to use and avoid any um, i mean avoid any spicy food or anything because sometimes in a dry mouth if you use spicy food it causes irritation and uh, um, and also uh, if they are post covid uh, patients ask them to check off their i mean ask them to throw off their old paste and uh, brush and uh, so take the new paste and brush and uh, and also um, regarding sorry regarding the burning uh, sensation in the mouth it might be few causes like uh, there might be um, vitamin b12 deficiency or uh, any vitamin deficiency to prescribe them give a vitamin b12 de de vitamin b12 zinc um, supplements uh, it will help them to recover fast okay thank you so i wanted to get my uh, i wanted to get my teeth straightened should i vac should i get vaccination and then visit your clinic no um i mean um, getting your teeth straightened and uh, everything i mean it's uh, uh, it is relatively non invasive procedures and moreover uh, uh, everybody can walk into the clove dental clinic apart from what i have told that after 15 uh, before 15 14 days of you not uh, of you getting the first symptom of covid first symptom of fever or anything those patients uh, the next patient is that uh, the they are um, i mean they are having cough cold and uh, fever symptoms and uh, they have been in contact with the person who is covid positive all these patients uh, only these patients uh, we would say uh, don't visit it now uh, uh, i mean defer it but uh, for um, for i think for a uh, um, to get a teeth cleaned or any dental treatments i think you should just walk into the clinic and be make sure that that clinic has all these 10x safety protocols that i have just told so if you um, and also the doctor is uh, i mean uh, doctor is good at uh, giving you the required treatment yes please go ahead so the last question that i would be taking is uh, mr suresh uh, how to maintain oral uh, hygiene during and post covid yeah this is a um, i mean uh, fantastic question thank you uh, this is very important many of us will come many of uh, patients will come and ask to us the how to maintain the oral health during the uh, post covid or during covid so it is it is it is the same gold standard that we always say that is brush floss and uh, use a mouthwash and clean the tongue so these these three thing i mean these four things are the gold standard you should not forget about it that do it every twice i mean brush twice a day use mouthwash in between your meals and uh, floss because uh, 40% of your 40% of the surface of your teeth is been covered by i uh, in between your teeth so your best brush is not very effective in cleaning the cleaning the um, intricacies of in between the teeth so regularly floss and uh, clean the tongue tongue harbors lot of uh, bacteria and food which causes which causes bad breath and bad smell near you so these things four things are very important and uh, as i've just told you that dry mouth and uh, burning sensation is quite common so uh, um, use um, i mean uh, mouthwash and also uh, visit your dentist every 6 months or in this period visit your dentist if there are any signs that you have any discoloration on your uh, on your uh, tongue cheek or on your palate or any feeling of redness loose tooth or anything just visit your dentist as as uh, um, i mean visit your dentist so that he will have the information and he will guide you uh, uh, in a proper direction so these are the things that you need to and also good balanced diet which is very important good balanced diet keeps up your immunity 
and uh, immunity is all that uh, what is needed at this point of time so i end my session by saying that yes it has been very difficult time for everyone um psychologically financially emotionally and uh, we have lost many of us uh, near and dear ones this has been a testing time for us but definitely there are signs that it shows that we are in the road of recovery there is a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, we have to be um, i mean this has given an insight which has given told us that take care of your health uh, immunity is god given it's a natural immunity so the persons who have good immunity and everything so oh, they have been faring really well that is the understanding so do do everything that boosts your immunity pranayama yoga uh, and good balanced diet uh, be near to your family spend time lot of time with your family that also give you emotional immunity and everything so um, hopefully we'll have a good times ahead and uh, we will win over the covid all the best thank you